It's the Fade 5 Podcast with Brad Evans and Nate Lundy. Place your bed! Brad the Big Noise Evans, uh, the good son, Nathaniel Lundy, back with you here on the Fade 5. And we got a rarity, a Monday night football doubleheader. Now, the NFL screwed this up because these games are going to overlap uh, with the kickoff times uh, only separated by like an hour uh, that's silly to me. I always liked, um, you know, the the double header where you had uh, the early game, especially if you're out there in the Mountain Time Zone or the West Coast, that would like, kick off at three or four o'clock. Uh, then you would uh, match that with a late night special on the left coast. But the NFL uh, ain't doing that, ain't playing that game. But still, you got a second screen experience teed up for you tonight, so you can take in all of the action. So, Lundy, let's go ahead and dive in on this Monday night doubleheader. But before we do, I got to ask you, how'd your Sunday go? I was up nearly seven units, so I had a good Sunday. Oh, I had a a great Sunday. Uh, My weekend actually started with a fantastic Saturday of college football. Made a lot of money in college football uh, on Saturday. But really, uh, my day yesterday, Brad, um, I I would like a a public service announcement here. And if we had some good slow piano music, I would play it in the background right now. (laughs) Um, I would like to extend my apologies to everyone in section 234 of mile high stadium yesterday for the massive amount of inappropriate language that yours truly was using throughout the course of the broncos texans game um i um brad um let's just say i i I wouldn't be invited to speak to uh an elementary school anytime (laughs) soon um, there were numerous four letter bombs, uh, directed primarily at Nathaniel Hackett and his play oh, calling. God. Um, but I just, I just need to get that out. I, I did have a profitable uh, day yesterday as well from a betting standpoint, but I really felt what was more important was for me to apologize to everybody in, in section 234 there in the South stands, because, uh, yeah, I was, I was pissed off yesterday, Brad. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Well, understandably so. I mean, it's a childish uh, strategy right now yes. in the Mile High City, and I don't think there's enough strain of hands whiskey uh, to numb the pain of what the Broncos fans may have to endure unless this offense figures out its bearings anytime soon. A silver lining in that game, uh, thankfully, because the Broncos didn't screw it up, I took their spread down to two and a half, and I took uh, alternate thresholds on rush yards with Juggernaut Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon. That one game parlay cashed. At plus 110. So thank you for not screwing that up, Broncos. But I understand your plight right now because the Broncos uh, need to get their crap together, to say yeah. the least. Uh, yeah, we got a couple of teams. All right, let's let's get to let's get to Monday night. Let's I just I move on because I, I have new I have new games and new players to cuss at tonight. Well, we got a lot on the line because it's a double header. So uh uncustomary right now uh, for a Monday night football contest. We got Tennessee Buffalo, the Bills are favored by a 10 point margin with a total sitting at 47 and a half Minnesota, Philadelphia, the Eagles favored by two and a half at home with a total of 50 and a half could be a a little bit of a shootout affair there in the city of brotherly love. So uh, knowing what you see right there in front of you, uh, what do you want to stack greenbacks on or maybe get a parlay? Uh, actually, I'm going to take both road dogs with the points, Brad. Uh, I'm going to take Tennessee plus the 10. I'm going to take Minnesota plus uh, the two and a half. In fact, I think the Vikings win straight up, um, but I'll go ahead and take the two and a half. Might consider an alt line on both of these, to be honest with you. But Brad saw the stat as of this morning. Road dogs so far this season are nine and six against the spread. So you're in the profit margin right now. <laughs> Except with for the Bears. Dogs. <laughs> Except the Bears, uh, you're in the profit margin right now with the Road Dogs, uh, and so yeah. I'm going to keep rolling with them. I just look what Philadelphia did. I also like the under, by the way, in the Minnesota Philadelphia game because what Philly did last week, okay, yay, it was Detroit. Okay, Minnesota's defense is better than Detroit's, so I just don't think Philly's going to just explode the way that they did last week. So I like the the under on the fifty and a half. I like Minnesota to cover and potentially even win outright. I don't have a great feeling about the Tennessee Buffalo game. Other than the fact, here's another factoid. Look at me with all the math for you today. Um, <laughs> Mike Vrabel, Brad, 
13 and 3 against the spread when the Ooh. when they are 4 point or more dogs. 13 and 3 ATS when the spread is 4 or more and I think he's actually won I want to say it's 11 straight up. So wow. I mean, Vrabel, when he's a big dog, underdog, he fights like a big dog and keeps his teams in these games. Uh, I'm going to outline this bad boy. And I think the truth is somewhere in the middle on your underplay with uh, the Vikings and Eagles. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the under on 53 and a half. And that's, again, an outline on Tennessee Buffalo. And then I'm going to take an over on 40. Four and a half. So it gives me a little bit of cushion. I may wind up like 46, 47. That's cool. Bloody and I both win. So on that little two legger, under 53 and a half, and Bills and Titans over 44 and a half, and Eagles and Vikings plus 105 right now at Bet MGM. That's how I'm going to play it. I like that. I, I think you're, you know, again, use the alt lines uh, to your favor, folks. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that as long as you're sitting with a, with a decent little payday at the end of the day. Don't be afraid of these alt lines. It's a crazy mix-up world. It's a doggy dog world in Lundy's estimation. Will it continue? Let's get to it with another version or edition of the Fade Five. Number five. All right. A guy that I barely knew existed on an NFL franchise up until about uh, two weeks ago. But uh, I like the over on Kyle Phillips. 29 and a half receiving guards, minus 115 at DraftKings. So you have no idea who the heck Kyle Phillips is. You obviously don't play fantasy football uh, because he could be an emerging PPR machine. He's a slot man for the Tennessee Titans and a guy that uh, Ryan Tannehill was rather fond of last week. Uh, he's got some Cole Beasley tendencies. And against uh, Cole Beasley's former employer, the Buffalo Bills, uh, I think he'd uh, you know, maybe conjure up some of those Old school feelings for Josh Allen, uh, but more so for Ryan Tannehill here. He ran 17 routes, nine targets, six for 66 in week one on the 16 slot snaps that he saw. A handsome 3.88 yards per route run against the G-Men. Uh, he was wide receiver 22 and average cushion. So what does that mean? He was winning routes consistently, whether against man. And obviously, it's going to be a problem against zone. And it gets uh, Teron Johnson uh, out of the slot primarily in coverage, who was targeted eight times in week one against the L.A. Rams. A lot of those, of course, came against Cooper Cup. It gave up six receptions in the process. Now, I'm not saying that Phillips is even remotely in the same class as Cooper Cup, but I think in a game that could run negative here for the Tennessee Titans, maybe playing some catch-up mode, maybe that back door is wide open, according to Lundy, and Vrabel slams it on a backdoor cover. I think Phillips is going to see a vigorous volume, and because of the high target share here, uh, I'm digging the over at just 29 and a half on the receiving yards, minus 115 at DraftKings. So, fade or follow, are you with me on Kyle? Uh, I am, and it, what's funny is I actually, uh, sitting back, would have expected this guy to show up at number one on the list. I actually like what you have at number one. I know you'd like to put your favorite uh, prop there. Uh, this one, to me, I, I'm I'm really surprised. But look, Tennessee right now, from a receiving standpoint, Brad, it's all about the rooks, right? We're talking yep. about a guy like Phillips. We're talking about uh, Burks as well, Traylon Burks. Um, a couple of guys that, again, unless you were playing fantasy, are relatively unknown to you coming into this season. But both of them, uh, Phillips coming out of UCLA, Burks went to, what, Arkansas? Um, I think that's what it was. Uh, yes, that's right. but both of these guys need to continue to step up. One game does not make a career as you, as you've uh, said many times. Uh, but I did like what I saw the first week. And I, again, I don't think it's going to be a massive negative game script, but I agree with you. I think Tennessee is going to be chasing. I think Tannehill is going to have to throw it. And that gets Phillips some great opportunities. Flash those tacky mitts, Kyle Phillips. Number four. All right, let's go to it. Uh, the other game here, Minnesota and the Philadelphia Eagles. Again, Lundy is taking the under on 50 and a half, and I'm taking the over on an alt line at 44 and a half. There's still going to be some points scored. However, I am under living in the land down under on Kirk Cousins, and the highest line right now in the industry is 280.5 pass yards available at FanDuel at minus 114. Most of the other books are anywhere between 275 to 277 and a half. So really good value here if you can still get it uh, when you're consuming this podcast. Last week uh, in their lopsided victory against Green Bay Packers, 32 pass attempts. Just went under this number on 277. 
But you look at this talented secondary uh, of the Philadelphia Eagles with a uh, big play, Darius Slay, and also with James Bradbury, who was bang up, really, in week number one, giving up uh, as a total, as a group, just 5.81 yards per attempt at the Eagles and two passing touchdowns along with 215 passing yards to Jared Goff and the Daytra Lions. So uh, I like Cousins. This team is going to play at a brisk pace, up-tempo under Kevin O'Connell. Uh, but I think this number is a little too high. If you know, I'm a gambling man, which uh, clearly I am. I think uh, it's got to land somewhere around 270 to 275. So it might have some beads of sweat dripping off the brow. But I'm cashing with the under on Cousins. 280.5 pass yards minus 114 at Fandle Lundy. Fade or follow. Uh, for purposes of the pod, I will say that I will follow, but this is not a bet that I would make because I do think you're going to be sweating, and I think you're going to be sweating late uh, yep. in this one. And so because of that, you're actually going to see something maybe related. I'm Ron Burgundy. Uh, related to this, coming up in bonus time for you, I've got a one-game parlay for this contest that involves Mr. Cousins. So you'll see kind of why I'm not a big fan of this one. For purposes of the pod, I will say that I will follow because I do think he's going to be under this total. But I've got what I think is a smarter way to be able to play this and get yourself into a positive territory with a one-gamer. I'll share that with you in bonus time. Crush the under on the White Claw of quarterbacks. Number three. All right, let's move on. Let's go to the running back position. And I like uh, Devin Singletary quite a bit uh, tonight on the over 44 and a half rush yards, minus 115 available at Bet MGM. Look, it's a, a hefty advantage, according to the odds makers, for the Buffalo Bills. I mean, they're favored by 10. Lundy and maybe taking uh, the Titans here. Uh, but it could be more of a backdoor cover. And as a result, I think the Bills will be largely in command for much of this game, which benefits the ground game overall. Now, Singletary uh, saw just 56.9% of the snap share against the Rammies in week one and 43.5% of the opportunity share. But he was clearly, in my estimation, visibly the best running back on this roster. James Cook. Oh, uh, fumble. Fumbleitis on his very first touch, and then bye-bye. He gone. You didn't see him again the rest of the game. Zach Moss was a secondary option. And, of course, Josh Allen uh, getting the job done with his muscular legs. But uh, Singletary, eight carries, 48 yards. Uh, did not score, but had a robust 3.25 yards after contact per attempt in the opener. And you look at the Tennessee Titans, man, against Saquon. Holy mackerel and company of the Giants. 23 carries, 188 yards. I'm no mathematician, but I do know how to use a calculator. So you take the average. That's 8.17 yards per carry. Some horrific gap assignment coverage by them. So uh, in the end here, great matchup. Uh, you got a suitable offensive line. And he, to my estimation, is a clear-cut number one running back and what should be a positive game script, uh, you, you pull it all together. Uh, I'm, I'm pointing one direction, one direction only, and that is the over on Devin Singletary, 44 and a half rush yards, minus 115 at BetMGM. Fade or follow? Uh, I will follow on this one just because if you look at what he did last week, uh, we talk about the game against the Rams, and yes, uh, obviously a very different game script uh, perhaps than what we might see in this kind of a matchup against Tennessee, but six yards a carry. That's what Singletary, yeah. Singletary had last week. And that was with only what his longest rush, I want to say, was about a dozen yards. So it's not like he had one really big one and that messed up the, the averages. No, he's averaging six yards a carry. So let me see, 44, uh, what do I need? Eight carries? And I'm up over this number. I mean, you know, it, it, that's a comfortable spot for me to be able to do that. I don't have to have a massive amount of volume to get to this 44 and a half. But you and I both believe that he is going to have a decent amount of volume because of the game. So you put all of that together. I think this is a comfortable number. I think this is set too low. I think he's going to wind up north of 50 by the end of the game. So I think you've got a nice cushion here. I think this will be late third, early fourth. He is comfortably at this number and you're ready to cash the ticket. Make some dollar dollar bills, y'all, with Devin. Number two. All right, marching on. Let's get an anytime touchdown prop in here. And uh, I had a really good night last night because I had Alan Lazard on anytime touchdown, a plus 210. And it just, uh, you know, I know this is going off subject matter and, 
Uh, we're, we're digressing in a Lazard real quick. You're not going to see that number above 200, I think, the rest of the season for him because he will be the centerpiece, the chosen weapon for Aaron Rodgers vertically inside the red zone, much like Adam Thielen will be tonight inside the red zone for Kirk Cousins. And I say he scores a TD, a plus 175. Pull this one from FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, you got Thielen, Thielen, taking on James Bradbury in coverage in this game. Now, Bradbury was sensational in week one. He was targeted four times, only gave up one reception and a 40.6 passer rating. But Justin Jefferson, uh, I think, is going to be draped by Darius Slay. And uh, when they're knocking at the door, which I think is going to happen at least a couple of times in this game, uh, Cousins, who only had eyes primarily for Thielen inside the 20-yard line last season, is going to rekindle those thoughts and uh, I think he's going to splash six as a result. He ran 30 routes in week one. I uh, saw four targets. One of them was of the red zone variety against Green Bay with three catches for 36 yards. But again, uh, Minnesota didn't have to throw a ton late in that game because they were in command over the rival Packers. Uh, though Thielen just averaged 1.20, yikes, a yards per route run. But all I need is one catch for six and we cash. And I think that will be the case tonight. So fade or follow. Adam Thielen, uh, do you got a feeling or you looked on it? Uh, for an anytime touchdown, plus 175 at FanDuel. I'll roll with you on this one. It's not my favorite anytime touchdown. I'll share that one with you in bonus time. Uh, so it's not my favorite, but I like the odds. I like the plus 175. I like him getting some red zone targets. And like you said, he could finish the game with one catch as long as it's an opportunistic one. So I'll take that one with you. I'll roll with it. I think Cousins is going to be throwing a lot uh, in the contest. So give me that. Give me Thielen for the anytime touchdown. I'll give you my favorite coming up in bonus. Hooked on a Thielen. Number one. All right, let's get a little OGP in here. Same game parlay. They call it OGPs. One game parlays at BetMGM, and that's where I constructed this little two-legger. We have told you time and time again, if you follow the spreadsheet, I hit on a number of two-leg parlays on Sunday, just you know, lowering the threshold, getting them at reachable, sensible levels, and cashing in at low plus odds. I don't need a like a plus 10,000. Uh, SGP, I just want something I could build a bankroll with, and usually I do with these uh, little two-gamers. And I, I got one here in this Bills and Titans matchup. Give me Josh Allen, 255-plus pass yards, and Stephon Diggs, 60-plus receiving yards. And you get that at a cool plus 115 at Bet MGM. You look at what Allen did in week one against the Rammies. I had 31 attempts, 297 Yards vertically against L.A. He was number four in week one and adjusted completion percentage, uh, which was a struggle for him last season, was the accuracy. He kind of took a step back, but this is moving in the right direction with a limited sample size so far. And then you look at Caleb Farley. Uh, he's going to be one primarily defending Stephon Diggs, and he only played 14 snaps last week. Uh, this Christian Fulton against Diggs, good luck because he was targeted early and gave up a ton of catches. So often gave up those grabs and digs. I uh, was money in the bank in week number one, a monster effort for him. Gabe Davis is questionable and not a hundred percent. So this could be like a, a 10 target game for digs here in the end, unless the bills blow the doors off the Titans here in the first half. So uh, Vader follow Josh Allen. 255 plus pass yards, and we're gonna parlay that on a one gamer with Stefan. Can you dig it? Hell yes, I can. 60 plus receiving yards, plus 115 at Bet MGM. Nice little payday. Like this one. I told you, I expected Kyle Phillips to be your number one uh, based on what his number was at, but I understand why you like this one. Plus, you've been hitting these. Folks, pay attention to yeah. the spreadsheet. These nice, simple, as, as Brad said, same game parlay, one game parlay, depending upon which book you like to use. They call them different things, but you get it. You understand exactly what they are. I like this one a lot. Um, I, I think, frankly, you could even, uh, Brad, I know a lot of the books are doing this now where you can now cross over between the games. So you could do this two-legger. Yeah. You could find yourself a, a two-legger or, you know, maybe a three-legger, as I'm about to show you in bonus time. And you could do individual, individual, and then, I don't know, sprinkle like five bucks on both of them to hit. Get yourself a nice little extra payday just in case. I'm just throwing that out there. I'm just throwing it out. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there, folks. You might decide you like this a little bit. 
Yeah, and you might like some of these as well to fatten the old bank account. Let's get to it. It's bonus time. Lundy, what else you got on this doubleheader Monday Night Football? Yeah, let's talk uh, some more of the Monday Night Football. I told you that I have an anytime touchdown that is one of my favorites compared to what you were doing with Thielen. Give me the pint-sized man who loves to splash six. Give me Isaiah McKenzie uh, at a plus 155 uh, to have an anytime touchdown. He just keeps finding the end zone, folks. I mean, I I can't really explain it, but he keeps doing it. So I'm going to keep rolling with him. Again, he's a plus 155 uh, for that anytime touchdown. Going to uh, Philadelphia, Uh, Brad, how about Jake Elliott over one and a half made field goals? Give me two. Again, I told you that I think Minnesota's got a better defense in terms of what Philly is going to go up against compared to what they were doing last week with Detroit. So I could see some drives stall. This one right now, uh, minus 120. Uh, Got that one at DraftKings. That was the best odds that I saw last season. He only had one uh, made field goal last week, but that was because they kept scoring, right? He had five PATs. But if you go back to last season, seven out of his last eight games in the regular season, he had two or more made field goals for the Eagles. So I'm going to roll with this one again. It's a minus 120. Found that one at DraftKings. Uh, give me this as a three leg one game parlay, Brad. Kirk Cousins, 230 plus. So I told you, you were playing the under on the 280. I'm going to middle it. I'm going to take the 230 and go over with that one. Give me Adam Thielen. I actually think he's going to get some yards in this game. So give me 35 plus for Thielen. That's the leg that might screw me, but I think he can get to at least three dozen yards. And then give me Justin Jefferson at 80 or more receiving. So Cousins at 230, Thielen at 35 plus, JJ at 80 plus, Brad at that pays me a very nice plus one. 20 and just because i like to throw things out there for those of you that are still paying attention to the hardball give me a three-leg money line all three of these big time home favorites for tonight give me the marlins give me the braves give me the dodgers put that together at caesars plus 195 Oh, I love it, man. Uh, especially the Jake Elliott prop. Uh, that's an excellent call. I'm going to 100% add that to the spreadsheet and tell you on that one, my friend. Uh, well, let me see if you're going to tell me on one of these. Give me Traylon Burks over 26 and a half. That's it for the rookie out of Arkansas yards. Uh, five targets, three receptions for 55 yards in week number one. That's 18.3 yards per reception. Saw 104 air yards in that one. Now, the downside is he only ran 12 routes. So they're easing him in, and, you know, he had a very inconsistent up-and-down training camp. But I think he's going to run more routes tonight in a game. Again, I expect the Titans to be playing from behind in. Uh, whether he's going against Benford, Jackson, it doesn't matter. I think he's going to be able to get just enough of a workload to hit the 30-yard mark. It's a low number here at 26 and a half at minus 115 at BetMGM. Uh, elsewhere, I like Miles Sanders on the over for rush yards. 55 and a half for the best odds right now at points bet at minus 115. So the other books a little bit higher, 57 and a half, 58 and a half. Uh, coming off a 96-yard effort on the ground on 13 attempts in week one. But more importantly, 6.00. Yards after contact per attempt. He was trucking over fools. Had the three missed tackles in that game. This is an offense that is predicated on running the football constantly. Uh, I saw right around 53% of the snaps. I think it's going to be around 55 to 60% tonight. And let's not forget, too, Minnesota against Green Bay. Yeah, they won in lopsided fashion, but they also gave up over six yards per carry to Green Bay running backs and A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones. Uh, and then last one for you. Let's do a little same game a parlay. Uh, remember, I told you I like uh, taking the over on a reduced total in this game. Here's one's even more reduced at BetMGM. Give me the over 42 and a half in Eagles and Vikings. And then give me Dalvin Cook, three plus receptions. And then Dalvin Cook, 15 plus receiving yards. All three of those hits. Amigos, you're looking at plus 115. Again, at BetMGM. Dalva Cook last week, 17 routes run. Most of those were the first half uh, when the game was uh, still in limbo. Caught uh, three of five targets for 18 yards against the pack. Philadelphia gave up four to 33 to Detroit. A lot of that coming to DeAndre Swift, who had three catches for 31 yards. I think it's going to be a similar output for Cook tonight. As long as we get some points on the board, 
feeling really good about this one game parlay. And there you have it. That is a wrap on this edition of the Feed 5 Podcast. Drop us a rating and or review, would you kindly? If you're watching this broadcast, give us a like on YouTube. Uh, Drop in some comments as well. We love hearing from uh, the six people approximately that listen to this podcast on the regular. Uh, Please follow Lundy on Twitter at Nate Lundy. You can check me out there uh, at Noisy Huevos. Both of us post spreadsheets. So it's all about full disclosure, transparency. You see us uh, in real time, the good, the bad, the ugly, fade or follow us. We always say that is up to you. And until next time, I'm going to repeat that line. As always, fade or follow. That indeed is up to you.